global strategy entry. The choice for entering foreign market is another major issue for an international business. The various modes for serving foreign markets are exporting, licensing or franchising to host country firms, establishing joint ventures with a host country firm, setting up a new wholly owned subsidiary in host country to serve its market, or acquiring an established enterprise in the host nation to serve the market. The optimal entry mode varies by situation depending on factors like transport cost, trade barriers, political risks, economic risks, and firm strategy. In this lesson, we will cover all these and much more. It follows from the previous slide that after studying this lesson, you should be able to explain the international market entry decisions, explain the entry modes, define joint ventures. There are a number of nation states in the world and all of them do not hold the same profit potential for a firm entering foreign trade. The choice must be made on an assessment of a nation's long-run profit potential. Once attractive markets have been identified, it's important to consider the timing of entry. The advantage frequently associated with entering a market early are commonly known as first mover advantage. One first mover advantage is the ability to preempt rivals and capture demand by establishing a strong brand name. A second advantage is the ability to build sales volume in that country and ride down the experience curve ahead of rivals, giving the early entrant a cost advantage over later entrants. Another issue that an international business needs to consider when contemplating market entry is the scale of entry. Entering a market on a large scale involves the commitment of significant resources. Not all firms have the resources necessary to enter on a large scale and even some firms prefer to enter foreign markets on a small scale and then build slowly as they become more familiar with the market. One of the critical decisions in international marketing is the mode of entering foreign market. The figure here illustrates various entry strategies. Each entry mode has advantages and disadvantages. Managers need to consider these carefully when deciding which to use. Exporting to foreign market is quite common entry strategy many firms follow from at least some of their markets. Under this strategy, the company exports the product from its home base without any marketing or production or organization overseas. Firms that specialize in the design, construction and startup of turnkey plants are common in some industries. In a turnkey project, the contractor agrees to handle every detail of the project for a foreign client, including the training of operating personnel. At completion of the contract, the foreign client is handled the key to plant that is ready for full operations, hence the term turnkey. This is a means of exporting process technology to other countries. Under licensing, a company assigns the right to undertake production locally using its patent or trademark to a local company for fee or royalty. A manufacturer should consider licensing when capital is scarce, import restrictions discourage direct entry, and the country is sensitive to foreign ownership. When the company finds it difficult to export and at the same time not ready to invest money in the foreign country, licensing could be suitable strategy. Franchising is a special form of licensing in which Parent company grants another independent company the right to do business in a prescribed manner. In this arrangement, the franchisor makes a local marketing program available to the franchisee. Usually, the franchise agreement is more comprehensive than a regular licensing agreement in as much as the total operations of the franchisee is prescribed. A joint venture entails establishing a firm that is jointly owned by two or more otherwise independent firm. In a wholly owned subsidiary, the firm owns 100% of the stock. Establishing a wholly owned subsidiary in a foreign market can be done in two ways. The firm can either set up a new operations in that country, often referred to as Greenfield Venture, or it can acquire an established firm in the host nation and use the firm to promote its product. A firm can establish a wholly owned subsidiary in a country by building a subsidiary from the ground up. The so-called greenfield strategy or by acquiring an established enterprise in the target market. In general, the choice will depend on the circumstances confronting the firm. If the firm is seeking to enter a market where there are already well-established incumbent enterprises and where global competitors are also interested in establishing a presence, it may pay the firm to enter via an acquisition. In such circumstances, a greenfield venture may be too slow to establish a suitable presence. Its management should be aware of the risks associated with acquisition when determining the firms to purchase. 
it may be better to opt for slower route of a greenfield venture than make a bad acquisition. If the firm is considering entering a country when there are no incumbent competitors to be acquired, then the greenfield venture may be the only mode. Even when incumbents exist, if the competitive advantage of the firm is based on transfer of organizationally embedded competencies, skills, routines and cultures, it may still be preferable to enter via greenfield venture. Things such as skills and organizational culture which are based on significant knowledge that is difficult to articulate and codify are much easier to embed in a new venture than, than they are in an acquired entry where the firm may have to overcome the established routines and culture of the acquired firm. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. There are five models of entering a foreign market, right or wrong? Wrong. Under licensing, a company assigns the right to undertake production locally using its patent, right or wrong? Right. A joint venture entails establishing a firm that is jointly owned by two or more otherwise independent firms. Right or wrong? Right. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we've studied till so far. The lesson addresses two related topics, the optimal choice of entry mode to serve a foreign market and strategic alliance. Basic entry decisions include identifying which market to enter, when to enter those markets and on what scale. The most attractive foreign market tend to be found in politically stable, developed and developing nations that have free market system and where there is no dramatic upsurge in either inflation rates or private sector debt. There are six modes of entering a foreign market. Exporting, creating turnkey projects, franchising, establishing joint ventures and setting up a wholly owned subsidiary. Each mode has relative advantages and disadvantages. The optimal choice of entry mode depends on the firm's strategy. Relative to greenfield ventures, acquisitions are quick to execute, may enable a firm to preempt its global competitors and involve buying a known revenue and profit stream. The big advantage of establishing a greenfield venture in a foreign country is that it gives the firm a much greater ability to build the kind of subsidiary company that it wants. 